now available on Instagram. Welcome to my channel. A little while ago, I did a video entitled My Favorite Product Collections, where I listed five of my favorite product collections. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description. Today's video is going to be a little different. It is going to be centered around Celine and specifically Phoebe Philo's time at Celine. There's so many overarching ideas throughout her 10 years at Celine that I think picking a favorite season would be almost impossible for me. So this video instead is going to focus more on Phoebe Philo's most iconic slash memorable pieces and moments of her time at Celine. Okay, uh, let's get started. First thing is I want to talk very briefly about the history of Celine. So Celine, formerly spelled with an accent, now without, is a French luxury brand that has been owned by LVMH since 1996. Celine was founded by Celine Vipiana and her husband Richard in 1945, hence the name Celine. It actually started out as a made-to-measure children's shoe boutique in Paris in 1945. Who starts a made-to-measure shoe boutique like right after World War II in Paris? It's a little crazy, but it took off because within three years they actually had three made to measure children's shoe boutiques and by the 1960s Celine decided to expand into women's ready-to-wear the goal of delivering fashion to everyday women it was very practical and sportswear driven Celine Vipiana remained a designer from 1945 to 1997 when she died at the age of 84 from 1997 to 2004 Michael Kors was named the creative director I actually quite like what Michael Kors did at Celine and I often think Michael Kors's time at Celine is really unappreciated and overlooked but that's another video. Then in 2005, an Italian designer by the name of Roberto Manichetti came and he only lasted a year. And then from 2006 to 2008, they had a Croatian born creative director named Ivana Omazic. So by that time in 2008, Celine has already been through a revolving door of creative directors. And it was kind of a dying luxury house by that time. To me, it was definitely something I had no interest in until Phoebe Philo came in. So then in 2008, Phoebe Philo was named the creative director of Celine. Her time at Celine lasted 10 years. She only left recently in 2018. And what she did at Celine was very simple. She made clothing that women actually wanted to wear. I came across an article about her first runway show and when asked about her ideas of what she wants to bring to Celine, she stated, I just thought I'd clean it up, make it strong, powerful, kind of contemporary minimalism. And I think contemporary minimalism is the perfect description of Phoebe Philo's tenure at Celine. Okay, now that we're done with the brief history, on to the most iconic moments at Celine for Phoebe Philo. Number one, I wanted to make it an umbrella term, so I'm calling number one ugly shoes. And Phoebe Philo is the queen of ugly shoes. And she's really also the queen of normalizing ugly shoes in the fashion world. And of course, there's plenty of designers who have made ugly shoes in the past. Phoebe Philo introduced many different ugly shoes that have become very standard and normal in today's world where you can kind of go to Target and pick them up. They're not just this like weird fashion thing anymore. Some of my favorite and most memorable ugly shoes are spring 2013, the fur sandals. The Vogue review stated, the shoes were key to this collection. Furry, witty, unhinged. They disrupted any notion of sobriety. They were fuzzy flashes of color, fun, and oddness. And back then in spring 2013, I remember the ruckus those furry shoes caused. It was like everyone was talking about them. And of course now, furry shoes are everywhere. You can go pick up a pair of loafers at Gucci with some fur in them. You can even get fuzzy Crocs now. Then in spring 2015, we also got introduced to the glove shoes. Very odd and kind of ugly looking thing. And I don't know, maybe they were inspired by like surf gear or something sporty. And then even Phoebe's own love of Adidas Stan Smith sneakers led to women everywhere embracing those trainers. And with all those ugly shoes, she really brought in this idea of dressing up but also being comfortable. Dressing up, but then dressing down at the same time and never being overly fussy or overly styled. I guess that's contemporary minimalism. Okay, the second iconic moment is the spring 2015 ad campaign, which featured Joan Didion, who at the time I believe was 81. If you're not familiar with Joan Didion, she is a famous American writer. Her writing is truly beautiful and she's way ahead of her time. But Phoebe Philo was also way ahead of her time because she used an 80 year old woman in her campaign, which is very unheard of in the fashion world. God, having a model that's above like 22 is a big deal. So having an 80 year old model is a big deal. That first step five years ago was a really refreshing 
change to the fashion world. Why YSL followed that with using Joni Mitchell in their ads. I think that Joan Didion Celine campaign definitely had a propelling moment. Now you have people like Accidental Icon on Instagram who just looks amazing and is killing it. I know there's so many chic, stylish, older women that now are like popping on Instagram and looking great and wearing all the clothes as they should because your life does not stop after the age of 25. I'm very much thankful to Phoebe Five for appreciating beauty in every age. Number three is sculptural jewelry. I think the jewelry that was designed during her tenure at Celine, it was sought after as much as the dresses and the shoes, maybe even more. All of it really, to me, felt like pieces of art. If I went to a gallery and I saw it blown up, it would be art. Even the bags in spring 2013 looked like pieces of art. And I also loved her play on proportions, especially when it came to belts. From the beginning, she was introducing us to these giant belt buckles, which nowadays everyone by the likes of Versace, Valentino, they've all got the crazy big buckles. For me, Celine was where I really first saw those ideas. Her play with proportion was just incredible. She even added jewelry pieces to shoes, which I've actually never seen before. The Celine jewelry at that time was just so creative and so inventive, and it was truly wearable art. Number four is Phoebe's use of prints. Prints are definitely not something you would find in a minimalist wardrobe. And if you did, they probably wouldn't be like the Celine prints. I guess hence contemporary minimalism. She used prints to make clothing more interesting and playful while still remaining minimalist and very Celine. Her use of prints to me was always so inspiring because you can still be very sophisticated and interesting looking as if you worked at a gallery and wear prints. I think they just make things more playful and interesting. Spring 2011, the scarf print, which Kanye West later wore and made super famous. Just even the idea of using a scarf and having a very odd print placement with a lot of negative space is so cool and interesting. For me at least as a designer, it really changed the way I thought about negative space and thinking outside the box when it comes to prints. And I really think Phoebe Philo really inspired me with all of her uses of negative space. Then also spring 2013, which brought us the painted graffiti prints with these vivid primary colors that were juxtaposed with these uneven pleated skirts. She's also used animal prints throughout her tenure. Took the animal print away from being kind of sexy, gaudy almost, to cool, sophisticated, which is not what you think of when you think of animal print. Same with the florals. The florals are often old world or dated in some way, but the way they're mixed and used in garments makes them super interesting and very, very cool. And you definitely don't look like you're wearing your grandma's dress. Number five, and that is Phoebe Philo's use of color. For spring 2017, in the Vogue review, it is said, but what also draws women to Celine is Philo's subtly non-conformist taste level. This time it was her brilliant color sense. Ming green and magenta combined in a low-waisted cotton shirt dress attached to a flowy skirt with red boots and a bag. I actually own that dress and it is one of my favorite weird color combination that she has done. I think her approach to color is sophisticated, but it's modern and cool at the same time. And there's definitely a lot of color blocking, which I think is something that she does so well. All the color blocking never feels like it's too much or it doesn't go together. It just always feels so right. And her use of negative space with colors as well is just really beautifully amazing. Some of my favorite color moments are Resort 2011. I think that's probably one of her first color blocking moments where she's blocking all these primary colors of yellow, greens, and oranges. It's almost like a Rastafarian color theme, but it's so sophisticated and cool at the same time. One of my other favorites is Prefall 2018 with all the black and brown mixed with the cream, leathers, and furs. Then we even have Fall 2015 where look number five is the half cream, half black dress. And that really started a trend because after that, everyone was doing half stuff. She has a really interesting, artistic, brilliant sense of color. Preparing for this video has really reminded me of how much I love and appreciate Phoebe Philo's contribution to the world of fashion. She definitely is a designer that has spawned a million copycats. To me, she also truly did change so many things about the way we dress today. And I do definitely think there's designers out there who are continuing her aesthetic of contemporary minimalism, such as Daniel Lee, who used to work under her, and now he is the creative director of Bottega Veneta, as well as Peter Doe, and some might even say the row. Even though there are designers out there that are still continuing the aesthetic that she has built over the years, in their own way of course. I do really wish that this is not the end and maybe it's just the beginning and if Phoebe Philo is just getting started because Phoebe Philo to me is truly a fashion icon.